I've worked a lot recently with turning interlocking cube puzzles. Some are pretty easy. Some are medium difficulty. Some are tougher. And some are almost impossible, I found, to repeatedly solve. This is a puzzle from Andrew Kroll of arcpuzzles.com, and it illustrates a method I want to show of how I solved this puzzle, and it might help you do some of the some of the tougher textile puzzles. What I've done is take out all the other pieces. Most of these puzzles have one difficult piece, and this is the difficult piece. But this has a frame where this piece uh, rotates for several moves inside. And I spent absolutely days rotating this back and forth, left and right, this little piece to get it in the right position. And then once you get it in, it's really difficult to get it out. So I devised a little system to try to track every position that uh, this piece could be in. So I'll just go over this. And really, it was the only way that I could uh, solve this puzzle in a repeated manner. This little piece inside this frame has so many different possible orientations. Each one is a what I'll call a node, and it's very much like a maze. Just as if you'd have a, a maze in some of these games, adventure games like Zork and Myst, all these nodes have different directions, and you need some tool to map it out. We used to use paper and pencil, and that's the only way we could uh, get through these mazes in adventure games. And I found that was the only way that I could keep track of this piece so that I could repeatedly solve this uh, tick. Now, in a typical maze, you have all these nodes, and somehow you need to identify each of the nodes. They're maybe not numbered in a game, so you typically would drop things and uh, come back to that uh, item that you dropped and you knew which node it was. So you, you need some way to identify what position uh, pieces are inside a frame. So what I've done is I've just numbered each face with a letter from A to E. Now it needs to be some type of symbol. It doesn't need to be a letter, but some symbol that when it rotates is unique. You couldn't use X. You couldn't use O. But the letters A to F work really well. Now to get this piece inside this frame in this particular puzzle, there, uh, there are two, there's really only one entry point. This is a... Uh, uh, a span of three uh, up and down and left to right and it will only go in uh, on this face. Here we don't have uh, a three span where we can put it in, it's just two uh, in one direction. Whenever we have two we can't put it in but on one face in this puzzle we have a span of three this way, a span of three this way and you'll find that this piece will go in two different orientations. So if I I look here, I can, uh, if I get this uh, oriented right, I can put this in this way, and then I can start turning the piece and tracking it. Or, mm, I find my second way here. It can go in this way, with the letter B facing me. So I'm going to show you how to map every possible uh, rotation and position of this piece so that you can uh, find out how to solve this. And remember, this, our final uh, position, if you look back in the video, was with C facing us. So uh, this piece was up here and uh, the straight piece down here. So that's our final goal. To do this, I had four different, um, I guess, uh, movements that I could have. I would have, uh, I used up, down, uh, left, and right. So in my 
piece here. If I rotated it uh, clockwise, that would be, as I look, I, I called that to the right, uh, counterclockwise was to the left, away from me was up, uh, towards me uh, was down. So let's show how we are going to go about and map this piece inside, uh, inside this puzzle. Now you have to start with one of the orientations, so we'll, we'll start with A here. And we'll say it's going to enter. We need to look at this piece always from one side, and this puzzle has a nice uh, front here with the name on it, so we'll call uh, this, uh, this sort of our viewport. And I'm going to look just at the face and what the symbol is and how it's oriented. So when we start, we have this upside down C. So we're going to call that our, our entry point. And there's four possible orientations or rotations, up, down, left, right. I'm just going to put all those different rotations that are possible here. And then I'm going to try them. So I try to move this piece up. And if it doesn't go in that position, and you, you sometimes take a few minutes to try every position to just to make sure you haven't missed a rotation in some way. But if it won't go in that position, I just put an X there. Won't go up. This won't go down at all. If I'm going to rotate it to the left, I'll move it off and to the right. And yeah, this will move to the left and then I get to a node which I'll identify by that symbol. And then I'll go back. So I moved it to the left, I move it to the right to get back. And now I'll see if the right rotation works. No, I can't go right in any way. So I've mapped out all the possibilities whenever this symbol's in this position. So now I'll follow my maze. I know that uh, if I move this uh, right, I'll get to the next node in my maze. And now I'm going to try all the directions that I haven't tried here. Now I've tried right. So left, up, down. We're going to go left. Oops, left took me back. Sorry. Uh, or sorry, right took me back. Left. Left takes me to this symbol. If you can. I don't know if you can see this because of the light right there. We'll go back and try the other rotations. Can I move it up or down? Won't go up. Won't go down. So those are X's. And we follow through our maze in this manner. to the next node here. You have to make sure you take some time and don't miss any of the rotations. But it's quite possible that from here, as I try up, down, and right, I may have two different nodes, and I would just follow those all the way down through. Only with a piece of paper can you track this type of thing and eventually you will if there's a solution you will find that you'll get to the node where the 
uh, C label is uh, visible and that's our endpoint. We can put that into the final position. Now with this puzzle, there were two entry points, as I mentioned before, with A showing and B showing. And one of these entry positions had no solution. So I probably worked on that for three or four hours uh, one day and wondered why I couldn't get it into the final position. Took at it another day, I, I got the piece back out. It's difficult to get the piece back out as well. If you're not tracking it and you're just doing it randomly, you're just going to stumble across um, upon the solution at some point to get it out uh, the little doorway. You put it in in the other orientation and you will get a solution. But if you track it this way, you'll come up with a series of steps. For instance, it may be you might enter, you might have to go up, and you might have to go left a couple times, maybe right maybe down, and finally you'll come to the solution. Once you have that, it's very easy to uh, repeat that process. And also to disassemble, uh, you can just reverse the, uh, uh, the directions to get out. I didn't uh, buy this puzzle fully assembled. I have a 3D printer and uh, uh, Arc Puzzles uh, that I bought this, uh, downloaded the uh, a files from allowed me to print this but it's not assembled so really this is the only way that you can solve these types of puzzles because they're not assembled and you can't sort of reverse engineering it by by taking it apart so that's a nice uh, a nice technique it worked well for me maybe uh, of interest to some of you out there that are doing these types of puzzles